for a different promotion and I'm just like why like you know so I remember my coaches would like struggle trying to find me fights as an amateur also and even as a professional like I remember it was hard to make my professional debut um like we the game plan is obviously for any professional MMA fighter is okay we're gonna try to build your record and you know go to the big shows but unfortunately in my case it wasn't like it was like we got to take a fight with whoever's willing to step up and take the fight. And, you know, me taking these fight against these girls who were ranked number two or, you know, ranked number one and they're, you know, where they lived or, you know, stuff like that. And it was just, it was tough. So I had to fight tough girls my whole entire fighting career. You know, I never really had like that edge to be like, okay, I'm going to build my record and give me somebody Give me some soft yeah, opponents as an amateur. Yeah, yeah, give me someone who's 0-2 or 1-2 or, you know, like all yeah. of my record. Like, if you look at my fight record, even as an amateur, I fought such tough girls. And even my record as a professional, I fought a lot of girls who were either in the UFC, who fought girls who just got into the UFC but beat them or, you know, were ranked number two, number three, and, you know, in California or, you know, in their state and whatnot. And I'm just like, it was, it was never easy for me. I always had to fight tough girls. And yet life. you were still 4-0 as an amateur. Undo you went completely undefeated as an amateur. So yeah. that's really impressive. Okay, so I started recording this midway through our conversation, which was that um, in the first interview, I had said that you had a really impressive record for your age, yeah. but we didn't even get to the fact that you're also a female, and so as hard as it is for men to get booked fights, it's even harder for females to get booked fights. Yeah. So having that 4-0 and amateur and 8-2 and pro record as a 25-year-old female is just phenomenal, like yeah. absolutely yeah, and then like you said, on top of that, you didn't take any soft opponents. Mm -mm. So <laughs> was, I've always fought my way with everything. I I've always been a fighter. I think with my my everything going on in my personal life, everything going on in my career, I've always just had to fight my way. 
Right, and you made it, world yes. champion. Yes. Okay, so last time I didn't get to any questions really about the Phoenix Rising tournament, and so this time um, I wanted to ask some more questions about that. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I guess first of all, um, uh, we didn't we didn't talk about your height there yeah. that um, I was listening to Jimmy Smith's commentary and like he just kept I felt like he kept saying over and over again she can really pack some power from a short distance <laughs> and like when you uh, when the lineup began with all eight of the fighters um, I felt like a lot of them were at least half a foot or more taller than you and yeah. a lot of them had half a foot of reach on you but clearly um, you know how to how to fight with your body type and with your size and like that you had a game plan and you had techniques you really like used your body type to your advantage yeah I've been fighting tall girls since I've been in the fight game I think even I, I have a Muay Thai record too and I remember fighting in San Francisco it was like at some Muay Thai festival um, and the girl that I fought I can't remember her name but she was about five nine five ten like no joke tallest girl i've ever fought in my life and it was just like i've been fighting girls my whole entire life you know since or since my fight like tall girls since my fight career had begun and i think it's awesome to have you know coaches like you know anthony and you know training main training partners like adam antolin who who know how to get in in the pocket and you know having those people around me to help me, I think um, I'll be okay. And I think that's what happened. I was able to showcase that in you know, uh, the Invicta tournament. Um, I was prepared to go against tall girls because again, I've been doing, I've been fighting tall girls my whole entire fight career. Um, and, and then you've done tournaments too, right? Because yeah. I talked to somebody who who said that they fought in a Muay Thai tournament with you and that you took first place yeah. at age 15 or 16. Yeah. So how was that, um, the pacing of the event? Because it felt like that thing went on for hours. Yeah. And it was like, normally in a fight you would have round one and then yeah. you'd only have, you know, a, a sip done. of water and yeah. you'd get right back in there. But this was like you had half an hour, 45 minutes in between rounds. So right. how did you... Um, Pace yourself, conserve your energy, manage the adrenaline. It, I I noticed the second round or the second fight you had, you just had this like death stare, right? And then the third one, you went in and you were just like, it looked like you were bouncing a lot, like you yeah. were really trying to just get warm and or stay warm or yeah. keep get your stay energy back group. up. Yeah. yeah. So how so was that? I would say, if I can compare the way that I fought um, in this Invicta tournament style on May 3rd, I would compare it to like fighting Muay Thai or uh, San Chao kickboxing uh, tournaments, going to those all day events and, you know, fighting in, in those um, because your adrenaline rush, it goes from here to here, from here to here. And it's like constant up, down, up and down. And it's like you have to stay focused until the end. You know, and it's the same thing it's with... It's like a marathon. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Instead of a sprint. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, okay, like even even uh, the first match in on May 3rd, my first match against Manjit, like it was like, okay, I'm not done. Like, you know, I might have won this one first round armbar, but I got two more in front of me and, you know, and then the second one, you know, yeah, I, I think she, uh, Juliana Lima... I think she was trying to intimidate uh, us girls in the back just by uh, being very loud and, you know, trying to make it uh, present that she was, you know, in... in Psychological warfare. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, I'm like, that ain't going to happen. Right. You You're know? like, I'm a veteran. Yeah. I'm seasoned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I think she was trying to mess with the girls mentally more than anything. I like, was curious why you picked her because I didn't realize that that was a, a component of the tournament rules was yeah. that if you won, you got to pick your next opponent. Yeah. And so now that you've said that, that she was kind of being a brat backstage, yeah. then I'm like, oh, that's why she picked her. Yeah. <laughs> to be quite honest with you, um, I didn't really, 
a lot of people keep asking me why why her she was like she's like the UFC vet and you know she has a lot of experience she you know on paper she looks really good and all this and that but it's like I'm here to fight the best of the best I'm here to challenge myself and my coaches felt like she was the one you know and it definitely made a statement right yeah. it made a statement that like I'm not afraid of anybody right <laughs> and that and that a thing that's another thing too that's why like I I even decided to commit to this tournament because I was like I'm gonna go against the best of the best the 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 high high ranked fighters outside of the UFC uh three of these girls got cut and you know from the UFC and I have the opportunity to go out there and showcase my skills and I'm gonna do it and I really did feel like I had nothing to lose and I think a lot of other people felt like the back, my back was, you know, against the wall. Against the wall. Yeah. But in reality, I had no pressure going into this because I was like, I'm gonna go in there and do what I do. You didn't the look stressed at them. all. You look cool and collected, and yeah. like the, like they said, like you had so much swag going in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was cool. It was a fun night for for myself and my team, and you know, we were able to go out there and just get the job done and and. Be a, a smart fighter, you mm -hmm. know. I get so caught up in, oh, you're gonna hit me, you're gonna punch me in the face. I'm gonna punch you in the face, or you know. And I was out, I I went out there and kept my composure, stayed cool, calm, and collected, and was like, I'm going in there, getting the job done, and I'm moving on to the next one. And that was very so. clear. Like you could see, like the fight IQ had leveled up, your game planning had yeah. leveled up. When you you know when the the fight started, you weren't just rushing in there. It was like you were like. Yeah. Getting your rhythm, getting your distance, and then your takedowns were absolutely flawless. Like nobody had a match for your wrestling, for yeah. sure. So I didn't even realize that you. I well, I knew you're from Gilroy, but I didn't realize that you're one of the first female Gilroy High School wrestlers too. Yeah. So yeah. so you were there before DC took it over. I was. So how was that coming up as a um, as a female wrestler in high school? Mm -hmm.